Hey Canucks fans, day one of the World Juniors is in the books, and what a memorable first day it was. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Boxing Day, Thursday, December the 26th. And I'll get to actual Canucks content tomorrow, especially as the Canucks begin to practice again in preparation for their next game, hosting LA on Saturday night, but it's Boxing Day, by the way, I spent a little bit of money this morning, but nothing that my lovely wife, Gail, didn't approve of. But let me know if you, down below if you spent anything and tell me something cool that you bought. Not to make me feel jealous or whatever, but just to, you know, so we can have some conversation. Let me know down below in the comments. But yes, spent a bit of money, but more importantly with Boxing Day comes the tradition of watching World Junior Hockey. And there's a memorable first day indeed, as I said in my opening. And to start off, to get into the, you know, the spirit, I put a poll up on Twitter saying, who are you most excited to watch in this World Junior Tournament? Is it Niels Hoaglander, our second round pick from the 2019 draft playing for Team Sweden? Is it Vasily Podkolzin, our first round pick from the 2019 draft, pick 10th overall playing for Russia? Is it Team Canada or is it Team USA? I put those four up there. I didn't put Tony Utenen of Finland, not just because he was the guy who knocked out the Team Canada last year here in Vancouver in the World Juniors, but you know, um, I, I think we're interested in him, but he doesn't have the same name cachet as Hoaglander or Pod Colson. So I put that poll up on Twitter and I got uh, about 150 votes so far and it's split exactly evenly between Hoaglander and Pod Colson. 41% apiece for those two players, both 2019 draft picks, like I said. And then we have 15% for Team Canada and 3% for Team USA. Not surprised, but I, I thought, uh, you know, I want to put Team USA in there because um, of all the star power that they have, arguably the deepest team in the whole tournament. And, you know, knowing that Canada and US would, would kick off the tournament playing against each other today. And what a memorable game it was. I'll get to that in a second. I love junior hockey. I, as you know, I'm not the biggest expert when it comes to prospects. I know uh, a bit about them. I know who's good. I know who they play for, who got drafted, how they play and what country they come from, but I, I certainly don't have the same level of expertise as many other people in Vancouver, and that's cool, good on them. But um, I, I know enough to at least talk about them, and I love junior hockey because of this, because they are 17, 18, 19 years old. They are young, they are fast, they are skilled, they hit, and they have awesome goals, and they make a lot of mistakes, so it makes for some really, really fun hockey, and we saw that today. So let's break down the Canucks content in the World Juniors today, starting, Tony, Tony Uten is the easy one, and that's because um, he plays for Finland, wasn't part of my poll question, no points, no assists, uh, no goals, no assists, no points, in 60 minutes, nice time, and that Finland team lost to Sweden 3-2 in overtime. Sweden actually had a power play in overtime, and they capitalized, and they won the game. And for, for Sweden, of course, was Niels Hoaglander, our second round draft pick in the 2019 draft. He had an, a, goal, a goal and an assist, and just over 18 minutes of ice time. So very, very prominent uh, opening goal for Sweden, then assist on the game tying goal late to send it in overtime. But his goal, you guys know what I'm getting at, highlight real goal. He did one of those lacrosse style goals where he came up from the corner, basically put all his force down on a stick, on the blade, somehow scooped the puck up with that blade, with the force, and then whipped it around, that side, around the other side of the net, backhanded it past the goalie, but with the puck still on a stick. I know that was the worst explanation ever. You guys got to see it on the replay. I'm sure you have. He's already scored a goal like that in the Swedish Hockey League, and it's very similar to what Andrei Svechnikov has done for Carolina twice this season, I believe. So it, it's a really, really skilled goal. It's wonderful to see, and to do it on a, such a big stage, World Juniors, day one against a rival in Finland, pretty darn exciting. So Hoaglander, excellent start to the tournament. One goal, one assist. Sweden beats Finland 3-2. Vasily Podkolzin, he had a goal, no assist, so one point in just under 18 minutes of ice time. Hoaglander had more than 18, Podkolzin just less than 18. But Russia did lose 4-3 to the host Czech Republic. It's still a good game, very exciting game. And Podkolzin showed his skill on that goal just as a power play, a Russia power play expired. Uh, basically, a uh, quick slap shot as the puck was kind of bouncing around in the slot, showed his skill. And one thing I tweeted about as well is, um, very interesting, Podkolzin plays the net front on the, on the power play, but didn't really set up any screens in front of the Finnish goalie, rather he, uh, the Czech goalie, excuse me, rather he would always pivot, go side to side, pivot, stick always on the ice, always looking for a rebound or a deflection. Maybe that was part of the game plan, or maybe that's just the way he feels comfortable in front of the net, regardless. I can't wait to see him in a Canucks uniform in a couple years, just like I can't wait to see Hoaglander in a Canucks uniform in a couple years. And, and as I joked about Hoaglander, I said, maybe he'll score that type of goal to beat Freddie Anderson and the Toronto Maple Leafs 
in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup in overtime in June 2024. Five years from now, one can dream, right? So that's Hoaglander, that's Podkolzin. Then you have this Team Canada, Team USA, this amazing game. I watched the first period, USA went up 2-0. I went out to run errands with my wife, Gail, come back, Canada's up 3-2. So then I joke around, maybe I should go find some more errands to run. And that third period was crazy. Canada goes up 4-2, USA scores two quick goals to make it 4-4, and then just seven seconds after the game is tied, potential, likely, inevitable number one draft pick, Alexi Lafreniere scores seven seconds after the Toronto, uh, the Toronto goal. See, I'm all mixed up now. After the USA goal, batting the puck out of midair, uh, taking it, intercepting a pass from Miller, the, the USA defenseman, and putting the puck past Spencer Knight in the goal, and then there's an empty netter. Canada wins six to four. So what a start, what an amazing game. All those things that I said I love about junior hockey came to fruition. There are big hits, that's, that's our dog, Troy, that's his tail there. Uh, not our dog, it's uh, Sean's girlfriend, Fernanda, her dog, we're, we're dog sitting him while they're in Mexico. So anyways, back to uh, everything that I said that I love about junior hockey, you saw in the Canada-USA game. Skill, speed, mistakes, big hits, uh, excitement, enthusiasm from all the players. Really, really exciting. And what's exciting, what was exciting to me about the Canada-US is you see so many players that have been drafted in the past two seasons for a Canada, or, or that will be high draft picks. For Canada, of course, you have Lafreniere, you have Byfield, likely going to be number one and number two this year. Then you have Bowen Byron playing in that, in that game as well. Barrett Hayden, so many really uh, good players. And gosh, I, I think of that byron McCarr pairing in, in Colorado. There's Bill Troy. That's going to be something to watch for, for the next decade or so. So you have a lot of good players on Team Canada. You have even, even more good players on Team USA, I would argue. You have Spencer Knight in goal, 13th overall pick this season. Then you have guys like Zegras and Turcotte and Wallstrom and Bobby Brink, Cole Caulfield. So many, uh, the, their offense of, of the USA really scares me. And, and no, no surprise, they scored four goals, but Canada just happened to score six. So overall, a really, really exciting day. You had Hoaglander with a highlight reel goal. You have Parkosen scoring. You have Utenen not doing too much. And then you have an awesome game between Team Canada and Team USA. So Canucks fans or Team Canada fans, tell me what you think. What was the highlight? For you of day one of the World Juniors? Was it uh, Pod Colson's goal? Was it Hoaglander's goal? Was it Team Canada beating Team USA? Or was it something else? Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply. And you can correct me. I'm sure I butchered some names in there. I, I told you I'm not a prospects expert. Um, but uh, let me know what you thought about day one and, and what you expect to happen in, as the tournament rolls on. It's a quick tournament, it's all done in a week and a half to two weeks. And, and then, uh, then we can focus again back on the NHL. But for now, Boxing Day belonged to the juniors, the best young hockey players on the planet. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. I'll read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the rest of the day. I'll check in with you tomorrow. God bless. Go Canucks go. And go Canada go.